That's a lovely question. Uh, so, God is love, and yet it can seem like one is being punished. And, uh, okay, so, I think, you know, it's, it's, there's lots of interesting things I think one can, one can sort of say on that. Um, uh, having had a white light spiritual experience, which I've shared many, many times, where there was just the experience of infinite light and love and power mm. beyond all description. And it was, the, the power and the love was so exceptionally, I um. can't think of the right words, but at, at, at an infinite level, shall we say, and, and sublime bliss all in the same time, you know, exquisite. And it was, it's obvious that no duality or separation of this or that could exist in such, in such a light. I mean, it's just absolutely extremely obvious. You could have no thought, no separation, no red or black mm. or any colour. Because mm. the, the intensity of light and love is just beyond anything uh, that would be of separation. And then uh, falling out of those into different levels of consciousness and then my usual... And I've had such a range of consciousness from near death, from addiction, and uh, from spiritual work. Um, and also being graced with Hawkins' uh, work. I think, uh, and also, you know, uh, reflecting a lot more on karma and past lives recently. Um, punishment, of course, is going to feel like punishment because um, one has, when one is incarnated, one forgets all of one's past lives. So it's like as soon as you're incarnated, you forget, like, if I've had, like Hawkins, I think, says, you know, maybe 15 or 20 lifetimes to the advanced spiritual student. 15, so you forget all of that. There's like an amnesia as you're born. And so if someone like, I don't know, steals my donuts, it's like, it seems unfair. You know, I'm, I can't remember stealing anyone's donuts, and yet my donuts are being stolen, or whatever it is. So it's like, well, you know, I'm being punished. I've been a good boy and someone's stolen my donuts. And, uh, but one can't remember. I think that's the thing where I think uh, one of those, I won't mention the name of the author, but, you know, if you look at past life hypnotherapy, then you can see, like, oh, I used to be a donut thief. I mean, I was probably a property bandit. I'm pretty sure I was a property bandit. But, you know, when things go wrong with my property stuff, I mean, I have no recollection of that. So it seems like I'm being punished. Another thing, I can sort of see there's a problem with, with, with separation. To experience life and separation and choice, um, you know, if, if I'm to be given t total free choice, you know, I'm an, uh, to experience what seems to be impossible, <coughs> individuation, and the seeming thing of having free will and to make choices. If I can't, you know, like if there was a loving God that said you can only make loving choices, and uh, then, uh, well, in, in a way that would be, um, uh, to have the extreme level of contrast, you have to have choices that are extremely of light and extremely of dark, otherwise you won't get much contrast. You know, yeah. so we have like the heavenly realms, like if you go into heaven, like if everyone is like a saint in this world, you know, and we're all like vibrating at saints, and it's like, uh, you know, like, uh, what did you do today? Well, I was just singing hymns in, in the church, uh, you know, at the back. What were you doing all day? Well, you were just singing hymns in the church all day, and what did you do? Well, you were singing uh, hymns in the synagogue the whole day, and what were you doing? So, th I mean, that's all the contrast we have, and we're all sort of like on this vibration of unconditional love. There's not going to be, there's not going to be much in the way of variance. Um, so, to have levels and realms within the spirit, the spirit realm, shall we say, where there is such a thing as what seems to be the absence of light. So there seems to be like, you know, like a realm where everyone's killing each other and torturing each other and doing all of that, you know, which seems to be the opposite, you know, the absence, well, shall we say, the absence of any sp sort of love and light in that realm, then, you know, there has to be choices, you know, because if it's choices are restricted, um, then it's like, yeah, you can have realms, like you can have heavenly realms, you can have realms where people are nice to you, you can also have realms where there seems to be the absence of light and love, but uh, so, and you could say that actually that does exist, you know, I mean, Hawkins says this is purgatory, so you have, it's a unique, a unique thing to have a physical body where you can have, you know, lots of variants. I mean, Hawkins, 
Hawkins, I think, and Jesus sort of said, maybe I might quote it wrong, you know, but this is purgatory. So it's a realm where if you've done significant stuff, you can also undo it very quickly, and there's a wide variation of choice. Mm. You know, if I, if I have a lot of... Also, I think, you know, it's like... So if it's allowed to exist that there can be the seeming absence of light and love, i.e. like I can kill a person and steal their donuts or whatever it is, um, then for that level of choice to exist, um, then there has to be a mechanism for undoing that. Uh, and, and to undo that, you know, for someone to forgive, there has to be something done that's unforgivable. You know, like if everyone's nice all the time, there is nothing to forgive. You know, and so that, that's a realm of almost being in the light. You know, so there would be hardly any contrast. Everyone would just be saying the same thing, loving each other, and just like, you know, it's just happy clappy all the time. So, but then, then that would be also limited choice in that realm. There is limited choice in that realm because everyone's more or less in the same vibration. So you wouldn't get the, these huge things. So on a certain level, <clears throat> you're not going to get the contrast. Addicts are, are masters of contrast. You know, we can go from absolute darkness to absolute light and then darkness and then absolute light and then darkness. But if everyone's just being happy to each other and nice to each other all the time, there's going to be very little contrast. But also, you know, intrin intrinsic in certain realms is divine justice. And so divine justice must mean that, you know, it wouldn't work because we're all one for me just to be, um, for there be to be no consequences of my actions in certain <coughs> realms. Because, you know, for, if I'm going to steal, if, if this guy's going to make some donuts and I'm going to steal his donuts, there has to be something in the realm for, for a bringing, you know, for resolution of that thing. Because someone seemed in duality to make some donuts and I seem to be there. So if it's like, okay, I just take his donuts and then there's no consequences for that. Mm. There, there's no mechanism in place for undoing. So... Um, it does seem like punishment because you, you aren't able to see the whole effects of what's happened in past lives and also what you're doing because one is quite ignorant in doing actions even in this lifetime. So like uh, if I suddenly say I don't like uh, I don't like this politician, you know someone you know it's like it, that might be my limited perception and yet I might you know and I, or or if I'm going to so these things have, have effects, and they have effects on others. And, but can, it can seem unfair if I think this politician is great and everyone else in the room thinks it's is not good. You know, there can be a thing, and I can, I can think the world is unfair, and I could think, well, if there's a loving God, I shouldn't have arguments with everyone in this room because I like this politician. You know, so, so then it would be like, you know, I'd be asking, well, okay, there's a loving God, so everyone's going to agree with me every time I say I like this politician and this politician. So, because then, or I'm going to say, like, okay, God is punishing, because I've just said I love this punish, this politician, and everyone in the room disagreed with me, so I'm being punished by God, and it's unfair, and I'm right. And so, if there was, so there is no loving God, and it's just injustice everywhere. So these mechanisms aren't into play. But of course, when you can't see the effects of your actions and your past lives, um, it seems like it's punishment. And it does seem like punishment, literally. And it can seem unfair. It's like, you know, I just spoke up for the right politician. Everyone disagreed with me. I'm not allowed to go to that group any longer. So that is like, you know, and this is a punishing God because God can't create a situation where that occurs. Um, you can't, I mean, I can't see that in three, the last three lifetimes there's a property bandit stealing people's properties and leaving leaks in their, in their roofs and sort of being a vandal. So, or I was the local plumber who just didn't, he just took the money and didn't. So, I can't say, in this lifetime when I hire a plumber and there's a leak, and I'm really, really angry, I think God is punishing me. So, um, and, you know, if there's 15 lifetimes, it can seem very unfair from a limited state in this lifetime. Um, you know, and I think the mechanisms of, like, I think uh, Buddha, you know, and the, and the 12 steps, I think the you know, Buddha and the 12 steps, they're just using slightly different languaging because in the 12 steps we say to carry on doing good works uh, for others, i.e. that's uh, karma yoga, 
you know, like, uh, you're, you're eating too many donuts, let me help you take you through the steps, and let me carry on for the rest of my life, help, help the suffering donut eater, you know, to get well. So that's like a good karma, and that's actually wiping off all my, without knowing it, if I just carry on to do good works, I'm actually clearing my karma without knowing it. Or if you practice unconditional love or karma yoga, or whatever it is. Now, if um, the, the punishing thing, I mean, <clears throat> I think, um, like Hawkins gave the anti-karma prayer, I think, uh, I think uh, out of um, the Eastern religions, they talk about doing good works to undo negative karma. Because if, if I've got like 15 lifetimes, if I just carry on doing as much good works as I can, I might not be hit in the face, uh, you know. Or you could say on a 12-step perspective, using that languaging, if I don't clear the wreckage of my past and make amends for everything I've done wrong. But the problem with the 12 steps is you can't know what you did in a past lifetime. You can only make amends for, like, I stole donuts from that guy yesterday. And that, I think that's the only thing I've ever done in this lifetime. So if I make amends, that means I'm going to have a happy ever after lifetime. But you can't see the wider, wider context, which you would if you take into, into account past lives of muscle testing or past life regression then your step nine would be like, make amends for everything in this lifetime, then go back in hypnosis and see everything you did in that lifetime, in that lifetime, and just must, or go to your kinesiologist, did I do anything that I haven't cleared from this lifetime in past life? Oh yeah, 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 I, I, I killed that person and drowned that person, and I haven't done that, so, okay, well, I'll have to make, and then you'd clear out everything and get to things, so, you, so because you have limited, and it's just, it's just made in this way, um, so, uh, the thing is, of course, you know, why not be aware of every mistake you've made for all the last 15 lifetimes and be aware of it and then think it's fair? I mean, it's like, well, if you were omniscient, to be, if you were born knowing everything about everything, then what would be the point? You wouldn't, like, you know, I already know about everything on the second of birth. So it's like uh, you'd just be able to rectify all your mistakes in one second and be omniscient and be able to clear it in a second. So there'd be even no point in duality. You might as well just stay in, in what's called the Godhead, in the infinite light, and not experience separation. So these are the different realms. It um, doesn't mean that, you know, if you... I sort of think, I think you know, I'm sure, pretty sure I've got lots of lifetimes of crap to deal with, which flare up with confrontations or whatever. Uh, with people, it can seem unfair. It does seem unfair. To the ego, it does seem unfair, you know, because, um, you know, it's like you're... I, I help a lot of people in spiritual, and they say, like, I've been a good boy, or I've been a good girl, I've prayed, I've meditated, I've done a good deed, and life's still tough. And, and, uh, and you know, you just sort of frame it as a... As a mentor, you try and give them a different context to try and hold why things aren't cleared up as quickly as people would want. Like, I've been doing spiritual work for three years and I'm still struggling with money or whatever it is. So, um, money go, you know, so I know that um, uh, there's divine justice and this is, per you know, for me, this is divine justice. There's divine justice and this is purgatory. So I don't really expect, I don't, you know, I, I, I would go with Jesus and Hawkins, which is this is not heaven, this is purgatory, uh, I'm not, this is not the holiday camp. <laughs> I, think, I think Jesus was sort of saying, like, love your neighbour and, uh, and I'll make sure you get into the holiday camp afterwards. <laughs> I think, or I think Buddha was sort of saying, um, if you're still identified with the body and your story and you don't reach enlightenment in this lifetime, you're going you're gonna to suffer old age, suffering and death. So I, think both, you know, so I think both Jesus and Buddha and Hawkins were saying, this is not the holiday camp, this, this place is not the holiday camp, where it's going to be sort of roses. So like if you want to be enlightened, then you can transcend. If you're not the body and the stories, and even if someone kills the body, it's not going to affect you because you're not the body. You're in the observer. Or, or, or you can be here, be nice, and then Jesus is going to guarantee you get into heaven afterwards, into the holiday camp. But this place is not like, this isn't that, you know. So I think most people in this world will feel like, even if they do spiritual work, like they're being punished. 
because they're still having to clear stuff even now, even though they've done a lot of clearing work. But it's not like there's nothing that's, um, uh, it's like um, if, if I, you know, if I sort of feel someone stole my donuts and then I saw it in a past lifetime, I stole that person's donuts. You know, I meet someone and, uh, and then they steal my donuts, but I go in the past lifetime and realize I actually stole their donuts in the past lifetime. Then it doesn't seem unfair. You know, it's, it's like it's kind of, yeah. Okay.